Hey, this is Shannon with 10 Minutes of Astrology. Welcome back. If you like charts as much as I do, remember to book an appointment and buy some Four Leaf Clover bookmarks from my shop on my website, or you can go directly through me. That's fine too. And if you enjoy these videos as much as I think everybody does, uh, let me know and comment and tell me that you do so. Today we are going to be talking about the full moon happening at the end of the month in August on the 31st. So I'm going to pull up the chart. We're going to point out all kinds of wonderful, good, jazzy stuff and talk about it. All right, so this full moon is happening the 30th if you are local to the United States and the 31st if you're going off of universal time. Universal time would be at 1.30 in the morning. And of course, this uh, is Greensboro, North Carolina time. So this is at, I wanna say 9.30 at night if I can read military time right. Anywho. We have the full moon, so the moon is here in Pisces, and this is in direct opposition to the sun in Virgo. And you'll notice what looks to be a very wide kite here, but nothing is really meshing up to make it a true kite. But I just want to point out that there is a large uh, kite in the sky, very broad. So if you have planets around these degrees in these signs, uh, that would be Virgo and, and Libra, and then we have Capricorn all the way over here to Taurus. Uh, so if you have planets in these signs at these varying degrees, just look at those. So a kite, for those of you who don't know, in astrology is a very, very beautiful thing. However, this is such a large kite that I can't get into any particularities on it because nothing is perfect in this. It's just a very broad kite. So if you notice things are going generally better, sure, you could attribute some of that to this, but we are not going to solely go on this at this moment, right? So there are plenty of other things that we can discuss here, and I will go over it now. Let's see what I want to start with. We have Mars here in Libra at 2 degrees 15 minutes, and we have Saturn here that has just made its way into Pisces at 3 degrees so this is considered in conjunct, which is a very irritating aspect. And what else can I say about the timing right now? Um, and this and the Mars and Saturn is a little over a degree off, which is fine, but it is still relevant. Some other things we have Juno in Leo over here at the same seven degrees as the Sun and the Moon. So the Sun and Juno would be semi-sextile and Juno and the Moon would be in conjunct at this time. And this is also at seven degrees, so this is more relevant. And those are the couple of things that we will be focusing on today. So let's chat. So the sun in Virgo is going to be more critical. Virgo is a very critical place to be. I'm kind of biased just a little. They are also very particular and they try to be critical in like the kindest way possible. So it's, it's very sweet and endearing, but it can also strike a nerve. Now the moon in Pisces, that's a stupid emotional place for the moon to be in because Pisces, I've found, struggles to regulate its emotions, especially when it's in opposition to Virgo. It's harder to handle that criticism. The good part about this is this would be a time to really highlight your emotional weaknesses 
and to be productively critical of how you are handling things emotionally and where your emotional stability truly is and how capable you are of showing emotions in a healthy way. Virgo is all about health and day-to-day. The moon is internalizing the external world, your emotions. Pisces is an emotional place, can't really nail anything down. And Virgo is kind of too nailed down. So being able to balance, uh, balance is the wrong word, but being able to stabilize those emotions that you have, understand what they are, and find a healthy way to express the emotions that you're having. Now, what else did I say I was going to talk about? Because I already forgot. Mars in Libra, I still think that it's a good place for Mars to be in because it is acting in mind, keeping things level, keeping a level playing field. It's not to one or the other. Uh, it, it, it's, Libras try to be the Goldilocks zone constantly and fail religiously, right? So that is in conjunct to Saturn. Saturn being in Pisces, that is like emotion on top of emotion because it's Saturn is your wisdom. It is your uh, father guide. And in Pisces, it is like this all-encompassing, uh, can't pin it down. So your emotional wisdom is either going to rise or... <laughs> You about to go in for a fall, uh, especially since this has just got it is coming into being more in conjunct as Saturn is retrograde, and so you're you can be falling back on bad emotional habits. Now the irritating aspect here, what an in conjunct brings, will basically be saying. Mars is trying too much to be in the middle, and Saturn wants to have this emotional lapse. And something has got to give here, you know, the, the Mars kind of leaning people are going to be like, get control of yourself, it's not that serious. And Saturn's going to be like, oh, let's see it, it's drama. Saturn and Pisces is drama, okay? I'm sorry. It just is what it is. I call it mama drama So my mother has a Saturn and Pisces. It's just, it's, it's a lot of emotional baggage bull and the Mars people are going to be like, Get it together, bro. Like, it's fine. Just keep moving. And Saturn is going to be like, but we have to talk about it. We have to feel it. That's going to be the thing. Right? Juno is semi-sextile to the sun, which means uh, the sun, being in Virgo, has to teach Juno and Leo something. What are we learning and what are we teaching? The sun has to teach patience and consistency, Virgos are very consistent, very, very productive, right? And and on it most of the time. Uh, they're very pinpointed. Whereas Juno in Leo is these friendships and these this sex and this romance and this just that's kind of fleeting. So to be more poised, to kind of pull it more together, to pinpoint who you are and what you want. And Juno has to learn at this time that gallivanting isn't going to produce what the outcome you're looking for in the long run. Juno, in conjunct the moon, Juno is not going to like that. Juno is going to find having to find your emotions and find your, you know, inner self and your how you can deal with all of these different emotions in this day. It's, it's going to be like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to deal with that. And the moon is going to be, is going to be off put because Juno and Leo doesn't want to do that. Like, what do you mean you don't want to, like, I don't, now Pisces, moon and Pisces doesn't want to do it either, but at least they recognize the emotional importance of it, right? So, I'm, I'm going to end this there because I'm so scatterbrained today, but I really appreciate you guys watching. Peace out, fam.